I'll be honest, I'm truly in no mood to trade today. <clears throat> After losing three days of profits, and granted, they were all small profits, but it was just nice to be <clears throat> profitable for three days straight, which if, if you told me, hey, you're going to make profits three days in a row, I would think no way, it's impossible, just based solely on my trading over the past two years. Like I said, generally my trading is 90% losses. <clears throat> Quite literally, 9 out of 10 trades I take are losses. <clears throat> so it really, it really was a boost in confidence that I might be finally improving <clears throat> to get three days in a row. Oh my god. <clears throat> so I, I, I really hate every morning I'm having to wrestle just to be able to talk. Oh man, um, and I'm also absolutely exhausted. I, to save money, I ate a peanut butter and banana sandwich after I trained my client and got home. I went to the grocery store and picked up some stuff, but man, just a couple. And granted, this is this is what I get for going to Whole Foods, but um, uh, the, the reality is. The food you get from Whole Foods is so much better than what you would get at Aldi's. And the Publix, which is another type of grocery store here, um, isn't that much cheaper, really. In fact, it's almost as much as as Whole Foods, but the quality is not good. I don't know how to explain it. If the quality of Aldi's is here and the price is here, and Whole Foods is here and the quality is here, Publix is... Prices like here, but the quality is only slightly better than Aldi's, if that makes sense. So you're paying more for only slight, <coughs> slightly better quality, so whatever. Um, I went to the store and I bought a little bit of ground beef, because that's pretty much all I ever eat. is ground beef and mashed potatoes or rice or some other carbohydrate. Um, and then I bought two things of ground beef. Um, milk, because the thing is, I, I know I mentioned this other video, I always thought I was lactose intolerant. And it was only when I started drinking regular, good quality organic milk that I actually start, didn't feel sick, didn't feel bad, didn't bother my stomach. It was amazing. Um, and I remember when I, was, when I was in school and I had my nutrition class, the nutrition professor was this French lady. I couldn't stand her. Annoying lady. Um, arrogant, whatever. But um, she did mention that when she came to America, when she married her husband, uh, she started gaining weight and started having all these allergies and she discovered it was because of the milk that she was drinking. I don't know. I, she also is annoyingly hippie-ish, whatever, I don't know, whatever. She's one of those people that probably tells you about the, the equinox of the, the cancer equinox, all some other kind of BS and whatever, horoscope nonsense. But um, to some degree, I realized after drinking quality milk, it's much better. You don't get any of the ugh feeling um, that you'll get from regular milk. And that and quality milk, a gallon of quality milk is like $9, unfortunately. So what I do to save money is when I make my smoothies, and that's all I use my milk, that milk for is to make smoothies, I water down the smoothies, which isn't very appetizing, but it makes that $9 gallon of milk last longer. So two two little packages of ground beef milk gallon of milk a package of spinach and i know i got something else i don't remember what it was but anyways all of it was like 60 dollars <laughs> oh man and i shouldn't have done it I, I i probably should have figured out a way to stretch the money because assuming my client <clears throat> i have i trained my client yesterday i'll train him again on friday which is um which is the 28th even if i train if he even if he doesn't cancel <clears throat> friday i will not have enough money to pay my rent due on on um on the first of monday i won't have enough money i get paid again on the fifth so the landlord's gonna have to get pissed off i might have to tell them listen i won't be able to pay you until like the fourth or the fifth and I'm not, I don't feel that bad about it because this guy, like I said, because of him, I've had foil paper on my window for almost seven months. The roommate hassled me to finally remove the blinds. And 
yeah, I should have removed them earlier, but my point of view, I shouldn't have to. This is not my job. This is not my home. If you if you're renting somewhere and let's say your refrigerator breaks, um, can you imagine if your landlord tells you that you have to take the refrigerator, carry it downstairs and dump it yourself? And then he'll when he gets around to it, he'll replace the refrigerator. I mean, that's not a good analogy because the refrigerator is not the same as blinds, but they serve a purpose. My my job is not to um, buy new blinds or curtains, and that's what he wanted me to do. And I told him, yeah, I'll do it, but I'm going to take it out the rent. Then he decides, okay, no, 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 actually, I'll do it, which means it'll never get done. And the only reason why he's even thinking of doing it now is because he wants to rent, he wants to sell the unit. <clears throat> so <clears throat> now that the foil paper is going to be to his detriment, now he wants to take care of it. So yeah, yeah I, you know what? And he probably is going to charge me for paying late anyways, but what can I do, man? What can I do? Although, now that I think about it, if I take this money out of this account, then add it to what I have, that might be enough with my client to pay the rent. It's so frustrating, man. I'm so sick of this. I'm so tired of 10 years of struggling and living check by check every time. When I was a cop, this wasn't really an issue. It, <coughs> it kind of was, but it was, it was irresponsible for my money. I was going to the grocery store and spending like 600 bucks a month on groceries on just myself, even though I was getting pretty bulky and I was working out a lot. And I also always had a, a fancy car, so... But, um... And my mortgage was only like 1200 bucks a month. I should never have sold at home, but that was my mother's fault that convinced me to do that. Anyways, I'm so sorry. I'm going off on mad tangents because I did not sleep at all last night. Um, the roommate was snoring. I can hear her uh, for the first couple hours, and I turned up music on my phone so I wouldn't have to hear that. It wasn't as loud as the trashy girl that was here before, but considering that she's on the other side of the studio, I could still hear her snore. Um... But even if she wasn't here snoring, I still probably wouldn't be able to sleep. Uh, whenever I eat all plant-based foods, so yesterday I had a peanut butter and banana sandwich. I made a smoothie, which I never finished. And <clears throat> I took some Greek yogurt <clears throat> and some frozen fruit. Uh, heated up the frozen fruit, put some Greek yogurt. And it was like a dessert. But I know my body well. If, if I eat all plant-based foods, I can't sleep. I'll toss and turn, and I just won't have any desire to sleep. I'll, I'm tired and I'm miserable, but my body just won't sleep. Whereas if last night I had myself a nice steak and a mashed potato, I probably would have slept much better. I don't know, I can't explain it, but if I eat a high-protein animal-based food, I sleep well. If I eat plants, like if I had a salad and some other stuff, whatever the hell vegans eat, um, I can't sleep. And I did it to save money. I didn't want to make the ground beef last night. I wanted to try making the ground beef later this week. Maybe even tonight. I mean, I have to do it tonight. I don't have anything else to make dinner with. But, um, <clears throat> yeah. Anyways, I'm sorry. I'm going off on all kinds of tangents because I just, I'm, whenever I miss big opportunities like this, and I'm, I, I suffer big losses, so I've gone from 103 to 76, so I've lost almost 30 bucks yesterday. I just I just get this feeling of, um, of hopelessness, and I just question why I'm bothering to do this, because it just, it just seems like I'm not improving at all. If, again, it feels like it's one step forward, 10 steps back when it comes to trading for me. Um, but you know what, let me, let me grind through it. Um, so let's switch to ES so we can get a, a clearer picture. And just to recap what happened yesterday, 5.15. So we've been following this bull flag for most of last week and it was fairly predictable. Yeah, I should have made more money than I did. Um, we broke down that channel, this yellow channel. I, you know what? This isn't looking proper. Hold on, let me go to a 1030. Okay, we broke down this yellow channel. 
uh, that we were in for a while. <clears throat> and then Adam and Sydney found this bull flag that I wouldn't have seen myself. And um, we were in this tight channel. And we broke down the... Okay, oh my god, dude, where is... Why is this not... You know what? I can't. This is think or swim. I spent some time last night after I got home from my client trying to trying again to get the trend lines to work on thinkorswim but they just don't they just don't and I, I can't stand thinkorswim i said it many times i hate using that app um this is the yellow channel that we're in for all most of april and march most of march we broke down mid-april so that's the first warning we this is this channel right here <clears throat> adam and Cini found it's not necessarily a bullish or bearish uh, pattern, but it's just a channel that we were in. And mm. on a smaller scale, we were forming a bull flag here. I don't know why Adam and Cini called it a bull flag. I would rather just call it the sending channel because there's no flag pole to the bull flag. And yesterday, we broke down A, the bull flag here, and B, this uh ascending channel here this larger channel all of this was a warning shot overnight bulls managed to bounce at this channel <clears throat> and i had hoped that we could reclaim the bull flag and that's why it took two longs here i took one long initially at the bell hoping to do a scalp and i wish i had just made that trade just so i can um i could have made some money there but instead i took this trade i think I took a loss on that one or did I break even you know what I don't even remember I think I did take a loss on that first trade yeah I took a loss on this trade because I remember I got a phone call and it quickly sold down against me and I, I exited for a small loss and then I took another long here hoping to reclaim the bull flag but it didn't it failed I was briefly in profits by just a fractional amount of money and then that failed and it looked like it was going to retest again. I, I don't remember when it was I got back in. But yeah, it, it failed. And I lost money on all three trades. All three trades was a loss, which is hilarious. And if I had any extra money, I should have taken it short. But I was done at that point. But then this is what Adam Asini has mentioned in his newsletters many times that if you're going to go short don't go short on the failure of the level initially wait for it to retest and then fail again so that's where i screwed up and one could have made money between just the fail of 4133 again and then selling at 4120 if you want the scalp but it fell well below 4120 and then fell down to this channel here which is interesting which it looks like we're bouncing at again here let me back this up to a f one hour. This channel goes from a February low to, no, actually starts here. This channel starts here. This is where it bounces. And I've said this before. This is like a March or this is like a February, February 23rd. I mean, February 20th. Whatever. It's, it goes from one point in February to the March high and then flows through to some of the April lows. And I know, look, I, I wish I could figure out how to do this, but I don't know how. And again, I mentioned this yesterday, and this is why, honestly, sometimes I, I think I can't understand why. I'm, I think I'm an idiot, personally. I don't think I'm very intelligent. But why is it that with almost everything I encounter, there are things that I think of that can improve it? That no one else has apparently already implemented what i'm saying is i hate having to see all these levels but i also hate having to delete and then re-put the, replace them again over and over again it seems to me this is powerfully common sense a, a child should be able to figure this out why no one else on any of the programs that use these things but then again maybe there's a way to do it and i don't know maybe there's a way to do this i don't know my point is there should be a way that Wherever the price action is, 10, 20 points above, 10, 20, maybe you can you can even decide on your own. I want 20 points above, 20 points below, 100 points above, 100 points below, whatever, to show price levels. 
but anything beyond that range I want the price levels to be gone I don't want to see them that way I can focus only on the major trend lines but that that doesn't exist as far as I know I can I only have the choice of removing all the drawings or having some of the having it's, it's binary all or none or I can remove um, I know it's in here somewhere but I, I can remove uh, the indicators I forget where that is because you know it wouldn't why would you put indicator removal near the um, the drawing removal that just makes no sense right Anyways, I'm sorry. Let me see if I can figure out another way to make this look not so messed up. Nope, I have no idea. I'm sorry. This is going to look crappy. So this is the line I'm talking about. We go through a March high, and we go through some of the April lows, and you see how it just smoothly goes right through here. And then we have our bounce here at this, at this trend line here, okay? I suspect if the bulls can pull it off, we might go back up to the bull flag and reject if they can get a rally today or some, <clears throat> sometime later this week. If not, we might fall a little bit further to this purple channel here, this purple line, or we may even hit the 50 DMA, which I probably should adjust after yesterday's move. Um, it looks like it, mm, yeah, I gotta lower it a little bit. Or they should at least set it up so that you can choose the different drawings you want to remove. Levels or trend lines. 200 DMA. Alright, so we may drop to the 50 DMA. Uh, or this level. I don't know. I don't know, man. Um, and, and again, the problem is with Thinkorswim, one of the many problems with that garbage app, is... I double check, <coughs> triple check yesterday on ES. If I try and draw that line from the February point to the March high, you see how it's, it's it's here, from February to the March high, and then this next point here. But look, all the April lows are way up here, which is why I drew a second line up here. I had to draw, I had to make a copy and push the line up. So I guess what I'm saying is the price action doesn't line up the same way as it does on TradingView. But even more frustratingly, there are times that my TradingView does not look like Adam and Sini's TradingView. And some of the trend lines don't line up there. So it's just, it's so frustrating, man. The inconsistencies between time frames. Um, whether you look at it on a look at the chart on an iOS system or a desktop, or you know, both Adam and Cindy and I are both using TradingView, and I can't understand. And I've even tweeted about it, but nobody seems to want to answer me why sometimes it looks like the price action is different and the trend lines look so different. But I don't know, man. So I drew another <coughs> one of these lines. Like I said, I copied and dupl I duplicated the line that. I showed earlier and pushed it up higher so that we can line up here. So this is why it looks like it's bouncing here at this line, kind of, but not really. But then again, depending on what time frame I'm using, it might look like it bounced. I don't know. Okay, it seems like it doesn't matter what time frame I'm using here. It's the same distance, which is so rare on Thinkorswim. <clears throat> oh, let me just read Adam and Sini's tweet. But again, I... I 80% of me doesn't even want to trade anymore today. I just want to walk away and be done with it. I, I one thing I don't like about Twitter, and I know Instagram does this as well, <coughs> is show you other people's posts that you don't follow. But I was just looking at some posts from this guy named Sandman, who used to make good videos. But the problem with some of these guys um, in this sort of 
manosphere space. And the problem with some of these conservative posters is that they are actually racist. They they are like I can't use that word on YouTube, but I don't care. Um, so there's this overlap, and um, sometimes I have to try and swallow the look past what seems like bigoted comments and just look at the point they're making. And they do tend to make good points, but I guess being a person of color, sometimes their their statements can be a bit um, grating. Come on, where's Adam and Cini's post? Okay. Yesterday, ES put in its first bit larger than 1% red day since March 22nd. My first leg still targets... My first leg cell targets were 4,100. Hit yesterday, 4,088. Just hit. <clears throat> um, plan today, 4,088 support. As long as holds relief pop to backtest 4,118. 4122 in play, 418, 4088 fails, we go down to 4072 and 4055. And I think I double check to make sure I have those zones. And also, I figured out yesterday that I can do this. I had no idea I can do this to adjust the size of this thing. God, I'm an airhead. 4072. I have a 70 here. I didn't really adjust it. I said I did and I didn't. 4072 and then 4055. I have 4062 as a major level. Then I have 4055, which is also the actual trend line that should show up here. That's this line down here. And then I made another one down here just in case. I duplicated it three times. So it could be here that we bounce. It could be here that we bounce. Could be here, could be here, could be here. <laughs> who knows. All I know at this point is that if 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 I'm just gonna follow my strategy, if a demand zone forms, retest, uh, maybe. I don't know. I really don't know because I'm just I'm still just so fed up that I've lost all the profits I made last week in just two days. Um. So yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. Because, again, if we come back up here, I'm going to go to SPY. If we come back up to the bull flag, that's three points. That That's actually a decent run. But I, I don't know. I guess I just find it hard to believe that we're going to be able to come back up there. God, I'm so tired. I'm still going to go work out today, too. This doesn't tell me anything. I Every day is the same thing do this mind you keep in mind about this that doesn't help me to post this i don't know i have to, again I, as usual i'm having to wing it and figure things out on my own <sighs> yeah i don't know I'm, I'm sorry i'm just i'm beyond frustrated i don't have money to pay the rent i'm hungry i'm sleepy i don't have much food in the fridge I work a job that I don't quite understand, and I have bosses that don't fully explain themselves. They just assume I know what I'm doing, and I don't make enough to even survive working this job. I have to rent out part of my space just to make enough money to survive, and my car insurance is going to be due in a couple months, and I'm not making, I'm not saving any extra money. It's check, it's check to check, so I don't know how I'm going to pay my car insurance when the time comes. And I had to see someone a couple nights ago, just a block away from here, and this person talks too much and doesn't know how to let me leave. And I parked my car, because I don't have the car to get back into my building, that trash girl stole it, and I simply don't have the money to go and replace it. I know it's only 25 bucks, but 
Um, and I parked just outside the exit to our building. And there's really plenty of places to park. But it was a paid parking area where I parked. It's Friday, like at 2 in the morning. And I went, walked down the block to speak to this person. And it was maybe like 35, 40 minutes I was talking to this person. I walked back. I got a ticket. $40 ticket. That's going to be due um, in a couple weeks that I have to pay or I'm going to get the late fee. And I just, I just laughed. The only reason why I had to use my car is because my car is, has the magnet on it that gives me access back to the building. That's how I get in and out the building. As opposed to having to knock on a door and hope that the security guard would let me in, which chances are that he wouldn't because he's a jerk. Um, he'll let other people in, but he won't let me in. I don't know if it's racism or what. And, um, yeah, got a ticket because I, I have no freaking luck. Oh, man, it's just, it's always something, man. I just can't seem to get a break at all. And I'm so sorry I keep venting on this thing, but really, I know this sounds, I wonder if other guys, most men are lonely. They don't have anyone to talk to. They might have a couple guy friends, but most guy friends don't want to hear about your rambling and your complaints. They just don't care about it. Most humans don't care about other humans. So for me, this YouTube video is just a, a channel as a way of me venting and, you know, basically talking to no one, I guess. And I, I have learned also that as a man, if you have a female um, girlfriend, wife, whatever, you can't vent to her either. She would say it. She would say, oh, no, you know, you can always talk to me, whatever. But in my experience, they don't want to hear it. They would love to vent to you. That's your job is to listen to them vent and complain. And then you have to kind of know when you can and can't give advice. Because sometimes I've learned this when I was younger. Sometimes I'll offer advice. And I had this one girl snap at me and say, listen, you know, sometimes I just want to talk. I don't need you to tell me what to do or give me advice. I'm like, okay. So it was a difficult lesson um, to learn as a guy. Anyways, I'm sorry. I'm rambling. And I, again, I, I'm, I don't know how many videos I'm going to be making today. I'm, I'm just so fed up with this. I need to take a break. But also, I need to look at Vix. Sorry. I didn't even think of that. This, this also was a pretty good indicator of what was happening yesterday. This confluent this is basically a mirror of the bull flag that was being made um on on spy and i think <coughs> ironically this was that larger um green channel that was right the ascending channel proportionally it doesn't make sense i know it doesn't make sense but that's how vix i've learned moves it doesn't always move in proportion with spy so this is a pretty big move for the VIX. Uh, as of right now, I don't see any other pattern. This this larger pattern, I might have to move to like a, a 94. Yeah. That larger pattern, the only... The only oh, God. Work on the tongue movements. The only other time I can recall... Well, you, you can see it here. This channel was created by this touch, this touch, and this touch. At no other point did we even touch this channel until here and we not only touched it we broke out of it of course that's on this time frame i don't know how it looks on another time frame because you know think or swim so it's broken out in other time frames it looks like yeah okay so we broke out of this channel so that's that's pretty significant um i would think this breakout this could be like a um a bull flag, maybe, that's forming. And this is the flagpole. Let's see if that that pans out. I don't know. Maybe. And I'll keep it there for now. But um, I would think this might go down further based on these patterns. But, again, who knows? So, yeah, that's my little synopsis on fix and uh yeah i think i'm gonna walk away oh god i always
always do this, man. Oh, I'm so sorry. I just, I can't focus. Let's put this back to spy. And uh, let me choose a, the 40, what was it, the 409? Where the bull flag hits. Oh, and yesterday there was this little bounce you can see here. Right before the market closed, this last 15 minute candle, just one big pop. I mean, what? Who, who, I mean, there's no, there's no strategy. There's nothing that would have told you this was going to happen, except if you really thought, you know what, four zero nine zero, this thing's going to pop. For some reason, you just thought that. But look at that. From fifty to eighty. Oh, look at this, this drop here. I don't know. Anyways, I, I got to submit this court report and I got to figure out how to do it. So <laughs> I'll be back maybe after the bell rings. Okay, I just gave up and sent an email back to my boss that their explanation is inadequate and I don't know how to follow their instructions. I'm done. I can't do this. I'm so tired of having to figure out and guess on my own. It's, Dude, I just, when you file something on the court, I think there's probably hundreds of different ways you can file a document. So what my boss does is she sends me a document and says, file this to the court. You could take just the extra 30 seconds and say the the possible title is going to be such and such. But instead, they take the time to explain something to me that's completely irrelevant and does not help me in any way to, to file this. They'll say, oh, this is not an agreed order. Okay, I'm not quite sure what an agreed order is, but telling me that what it's not doesn't help. Better yet, tell me what it is so I can I can figure out what to, to title it as. And it's just so frustrating, man. I'm not an attorney. I have zero experience with being an attorney or being a paralegal. And there's this consistent assumption that I always know what to do. And sometimes I figure it out, but I'm, I'm just too tired and exhausted right now and frustrated to sit here and try and guess. So I just sent an email saying, I don't know what you're asking me, basically, because I'm just done. I probably should try and figure out another, find another job. That's what I should do. The problem is finding a job in Miami sucks, man. Half the time you have to learn how to speak Spanish. And most of the time it's a service job where they pay you crap. Oh, man. Anyways, as you can see, bell rung. We had this little push up here and then drop. Um, I suppose one can consider this a demand here, but I'm not even going to bother marking it. Uh, well, I guess Adam Asini would say this is a fake breakdown of yesterday's lows, I suppose. So we may get a bounce here, but. I don't know. Um, I'm curious what's going to happen on the VIX with this bull flag I found here. If if we drop here or if we... And it, but then it gets, we're right in the middle. There's plenty of room to move and see what happens here. So, I don't know. If you took a swing, if you took this long and then held for a swing, well, if you were in the options, you're burned. Um, but I suppose if you're in the futures, you, you're still okay. So, yeah. I don't know what's going to happen, man. I just, I don't care. <clears throat> All right, while I was busy trying to figure out how to do stuff I've never done before, uh, we formed a demand. It was cleanly retested. Um, this candle started at 10 o'clock, so I'm assuming 10 o'clock is here, the lowest point. No, it wasn't. So I don't know. I guess maybe one could have gotten in at 20. And if this thing slowly grinds up, maybe it will become 35. I don't know.
I have noticed on VIX we are rejecting from a daily. Although I don't know why I have two daily so close to each other. I'm going to have to figure out which one to delete. Probably this one. <clears throat> So this is the channel, hold on, I gotta stop doing the 115. This is the channel that we broke out of yesterday, so there's a chance we may bounce here. So this is gonna be tricky. Plus this bull flag I found here. So we got two confluences here and the hour level, but we need to first get past this four hour. I don't know if that's gonna happen. All right, more work, I'll be back. All right, I think I'm gonna actually be caught up finally. Um, so again, demand formed, it looked like it was starting to retest and it failed. We dropped, I guess there's a rejection at VWAP. Um, let's take a look at ES, see if there's anything revealing there. Okay, it's showing me the options for ES. Yeah. I don't know if this is a no, no bear flag would look different so yeah this is a failure first we had a failure of today's lows pre-market and now a failure of those lows if i recall the next level was four zero five five i think i have that marked on on mm, no because this is four zero eight eight so this is wrong right here. Oh, Wait, 4072 was next down. That's right. I don't know if this is 4072 or not. Actually, that's 4077 looks like. I don't know, it's all a guess. It's all a guess. And I have, um overlapping levels here remove 4085 <clears throat> but anyways Jesus Christ I suspected that we'll have a follow-through further down today I just didn't know how to find any indication that it would happen I thought maybe we would form a supply pre-market but we didn't oh wait you know what it's a sloppy looking supply here on SPY, but of course on ES, a clean supply here at the one hour, 4106. I wouldn't really call it a retest because it happened just as the market opened. So anyways, any point here I could have gotten in one option of 2530 and let this thing run. And if I did, if I had, oh, there we go. We would have gotten, um, our money back from the money lost yesterday. The only thing I can hope for is that we get a retest, maybe this level. So I'm gonna put an alert here. If we can get below 35, maybe we'll get a bounce and a retest of 4088 and then a rejection. But I thought about this this morning. I thought, you know what? Should I just take it short from the get-go after yesterday's drop? Because what I've been noticing, we have been following the seasonality, but we seem to be sort of like a week early. So April's, let's look again. April tends to be a rallying month from the very beginning. But we started rallying sort of at the end of March. Well, I guess it does follow through here. It is following through. But the big drop isn't supposed to really come until the beginning of May. According to this, most... I know it's, I, that's the problem with me trading. I'm too, I'm too accurate. I'm too, um, I don't know, by the book, too strict. Obviously, this isn't exactly how price is supposed to go. It's just a, a guess. But still... This clearly looks like April's mostly a bullish month. 
and if I if I pull out ES, that's not really what happened. And we shouldn't be getting seeing much of a big pullback until sort of one week, two weeks into May. But we're all, we're not even in May yet, and we're already seeing a pretty big pullback. Let's do this on a daily, and let's try and get rid of all the uh, indicators. All right, so obviously this is too far back. Daily's not good. Let's try four hour. We'll start at the beginning of the month, the beginning of the year. So yeah, I mean, we didn't break out of this um this bearish trend going down here until until um wait a minute January oh my god 2023 2023 when does this start okay let's try doing the hour good god man December 2023 what is what is going on here I'm, I'm trying not to freaking scream right now. Let me breathe and try and reset and try and focus. I have this on an hour candle. We're looking at ES futures. Why is it I'm seeing December 2022 when this is on the hour candle? I don't know. I'm trying to zoom in so that I can only see January of 23. February. January 23. Okay. There's our drop. What? Why? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just extra stupid today. I just don't get it. Okay. Here's our bearish trend line <clears throat> we look again at um yeah i don't know this proportions here looks nothing like what's going on here um but whatever april's supposed to be bullish may supposed to be bearish and nope i did not want to close that can't I'm just whatever anyways so yep this is just dropping down even more I even considered just jumping in with most of my op most of my account and seeing how low this will go but then I'd realize that's just risky so my gut told me maybe it would be smart to take this short at a rejection of VWAP or take this short right after the bell and I didn't listen to my gut so <clears throat> <clears throat> screw it man Let's see if this can come back up to 4088, which do I even have that correctly on here? Probably not. And then we get a retest and come back down. Otherwise, I'm just not going to bother trading today. <clears throat> okay. Formed a very clean demand here. Very clean. And we have a rejection, kind of, no, not really, but we are forming a clean supply on a um, VIX and a lower high. So I wonder if I should adjust this flag a little bit. Let's try it. Adjust it a little bit here. And maybe this is a rejection, so... Mm -hmm. Maybe I might be being premature on looking for a short. Let's see if this... I'm going to go ahead and mark this one. 
this is clearly a good demand and so far this candle looks good so let's see if we get a retest 0.37 0.57 Again, though, this is what I was asking. I was asking for a, a rise up and a retest of 4088, although we're at 4090. So I don't know. One of two things are going to happen. This is just a, a fake bounce, and it's going to reject and go down even more. Or this may actually be a, a, the bulls finally recovering a bit, and this candle is either just going to keep I mean, this candle, the price is going to keep rallying and we're not going to get a retest or we get a retest and it continues rallying. But the risk about going long with the retest is, like I said, this may well come back down and fall, which is why I put the alert here on my put, on this put, with the expectation that we may do a fake bounce and then fall back even further. And we almost triggered my, um, my alert here. So, hmm. my God, there's this song that they play on Instagram. Females love playing it on their um, their posts. It's something about I have my Gucci on or some crap. God, it's terrible, horrible song. I gotta play something to wash it out. Some Battlestar Galactica works. <clears throat> See how we're struggling here to get this higher. I would assume bulls 4088 was support and it's lost. Now recovered. So bulls want to recover and maintain 4088. Bears, of course, want to keep it below so we can keep the follow through down. Let me just verify. See what Adam and Cini said. Yeah, 4088. Because otherwise, we're going to go down to 4072, which I don't know how much further down that is. Yeah, not much further down. So yeah, we're either going to pop higher or we're going to reject and fall lower. <laughs> That's the best I can tell you. All right. We got a little bit of a retest, but not as low as I would like. I want this to go down to about 40 at least. But of course, again, there's no guarantee it's going to turn around and come back up. So. I'm trying to be patient. Actually, I'm looking. I was so busy doing work. It looks like we did get down to almost 40. I really can't tell. <clears throat> Let's see. I figured out how to do this. Zoom in. Yeah, it looks like we got down to the low 40s. This would have been a good time to get in. It's about 45. Again, the concern is, will it turn back around? Or is this a rejection of 4088 again? And let me, you know what, let me fix this. just to make me feel better. Truthfully, if I had enough funds, I would take an option long here and then wait to see if for rejection and take an option short. But we're, gonna, we're just going to go in. I, I don't know. 
if this is the time or not. Yeah, I had my chance. I could have gotten at 45. I should have just had it by and already set. Jesus Christ, dude. There it goes. There it goes. <sighs> it gave me another chance. It went down to 45. Could have gotten in. Could have gotten in. Set my cell at 56 just to make 10 bucks. There it is. Well, I'm getting really tired of my hesitation. Get really tired of that. Look, there's a rejection at VWAP as I expected. Now, one of two things are going to happen here. This projection will be really strong and I'll push this down and this will be just a fake bounce or this will come down to 50, 48, 49 and the bulls will step back in and push this higher and will break through VWAP. So my question is, which, does, which is it going to be? Do I go short, assuming this VWAP projection might be legitimate? Or do I go long, hoping that the bulls will step in and push this up? And look at VIX, another indication of what I was saying about how we formed. Oh my God, stop that. Recent VIX. I hate this program, man. Remember I said how the supply was formed on, <clears throat> you know what? I'm starting to think that from now on, anytime a supply is formed on VIX, forget the strategy, just take it long. That's what I probably should do. Forget, forget the retest. I should have just gone long somewhere back here at 40 high 30s or set a buy-in again in 44, 45. All right, we're going to go in at 50. Let's hope it'll pull back enough to pick me up and then continue up. Probably won't. Or, knowing my luck, it'll pull back enough to pick me up and then continue going down. There we go. From 50 to 49 to 48. Now we're going to go to 47. Yep. Meanwhile, I'm just going to sit here and hope that the bulls step in and push this up to so that we don't lose 4088. If bulls can step in, big if. Push this back up to VWAP. And then if the bulls can break through VWAP, again, big if, this can go from 50 to 60. Again, all of these are big ifs. Because just below on VIX, I have a four hour support. That may prove to be a problem. <clears throat>
I didn't realize it until just now that demand here is also a 30 minute demand. We've reached that four hour support on VIX. So this may be an issue. Look. And we're approaching the channel we broke out of yesterday and the, this flagging channel I found. So this is a concern. And it looks like we're rejecting off VIX again. Damn it. Yeah, not good. Not good. Come on, bulls, break the view up, break it. Come on. If we, if we, I forget where the targets. God, I hate Twitter. Four one one eight is four zero eight eight holes. That's a pretty big target, Adam Mancini. Four one here, all the way up here. Wow. If that's the case, maybe I'm, I'm being too cheap selling at 60, but again, I it doesn't look like the bulls are going to be able to get past this VWAP area. And even though VIX is going down, this is going nowhere. We've now approached the channel that we broke out of yesterday on VIX. I'm sorry, I'm putting myself at 51. If if it can go, it can go. If not, I this looks like it's gonna just turn around and reject or just get my money back. I'm trying to be patient and give it time to work. I'm hoping in this candle we can break past VWAP. But again, look on VIX, we're back to this channel. It, it doesn't look like it in my other chart. I mean, on this chart, but it does on the other chart. Should I take off my cell now? Too late. Too late. So I'm guessing I sold early. I gotta probably set this to sell at 65, maybe 70 instead. Adam's right. I should always trust in this this theories. Even if it doesn't make it up to 418, I could have set the sell maybe at 406. Hello. 
And instead of selling at 60, I would have sold at 65, maybe. But you know what? I'm not complaining. It's a profit day. I don't have enough to trade anymore, really. But it's a profit day. So I, I, I killed my losing streak, thankfully. Yeah, look at it running now. Adam was right. This is probably going to hit 4188. Oh, man, I sold early. What if I had put my... Well, first of all, I should have gotten at 45. Should have gotten at 45 here on the retest, number one. Number two, I could have probably set my sell at 65. I don't know if we actually hit that yet. I'm sure we will soon. And that would have been a $20 profit. Anyways, I'll be back. Wow, guys, this is another one of my major problems when it comes to trading. I keep selling too early. Uh, it looks like Adam Messini's right. This is going to grind its way back to 4118. I would already be at this point $40 in profits if I had waited. God, I wish I was fast on the trigger and canceled that sell. Now, basically, what happened is someone bought my option because I was an idiot and sold too early. And now they've gone from 60 to 80, so they've made more profits than I have by buying the option that I sold too early. And even if this doesn't make it to 4118 up here, and who knows, I probably have the wrong 4118 knowing me. This might not even be 4118. I could have sold here at 80 and made $30 profit instead of just 10. And that 30 would have wiped away my losses yesterday and brought me back to where I started. But here the strategy almost kind of works. What I do, instead of a 10 cent zone that MK uses with his 5 minute candles, I use 50 minutes, 50 minute candles, confirmations with a 20 cent zone. But you can see here, the demand was formed at 0.37. On a 20 cent zone, that's 0.57. We never pull back anywhere near that. In fact, the pullback only got around to 0.71. And that's the thing. I have to, I believe it's important to be somewhat flexible with the strategy and follow your gut. And that's why I jumped in when I did, but I wish I had gotten in at 45. Nonetheless, I got in at 50. Problem is, again, I sold too damn early. This may well hit 90 any moment now. And if it does, that's a $40 profit. There it is, just hit 90. And forget about that. Adam Mancini says it's going to hit 4. Let's see where 4118 is. Let's see if we can figure out if I have the right level. 4118 is this weekly I have here. No, a little bit higher. So definitely higher than the pre-market highs. So let's look over it again. So yeah, actually my 4118 is actually lower than it actually should be. So that's even more damning. This means <laughs> if I held to this point, <coughs> I probably would have made... At the rate this thing is going, I probably would have made about a hundred bucks today. Instead, I just came out with ten. I know I have this obnoxiously positive voice in my head telling me, "Hey, you still made profits. You broke your losing streak," but that's not good enough. If I held up until now, I could have made up for all of my losses yesterday and put myself ahead of where I was last week. When will I learn, man? Part of me is thinking I should hit the 409 strike. See if this pulls back a little bit and go long with a higher strike so I can continue with making profits. And look at VIX. 
we broke back into that channel we fell out of yesterday although we're back into this daily <clears throat> so that's going to be a problem and in this this trend from way before but if we can break through these two this might go all the way down to this daily that's remember this this is the daily that held it from going up all of last week so what do you think guys should i take this long with the expectation this might push it a little bit higher i should have gotten that 20. I just don't want to risk losing any of the profits I already made. Yeah, I don't want to do it. I'm sorry. I'm mad that I didn't make as much profits as I did, but I don't want to risk losing what profits I do have, even though they're tiny profits. So let's hypothetically mentally say that we got a net 20 on this option and see if it gets up to 30. Well, or hypothetically one dollar in the hole. Okay. Anyways, I'll be back. All right. Um our hypothetical twenty dollar if we would have gotten into that one I really couldn't even tell you how how high that went or where it would have gone because uh, I forget when it was I left let's go shower it looks like we might have peaked up at like 25 27 but for the most part we're just chopping sideways um, still this is not the option I chose this morning <clears throat> I chose the 409 I mean 408, right? 408. Wasn't it? Four oh seven is what I chose, actually. Wow. Wow guys. <laughs> Remember what I said? How I could have made almost a hundred dollars? Well that if it would reach one eight four one eight, it hasn't yet. But imagine, I got in at 50 and sold at 60, and it has spent pretty much most of the day ever since then well above 60. With a peak, it looks like, at 120. So instead of making $10, I could have potentially made anywhere between $50 to $70. Oh, my God, dude. And we got this bounce at this this trend again, which, yeah, this is 515, which is where it bounced. Um, you know what? I want to see if this bounced twice at um, trading view. Come on, you piece of garbage. Okay, so this is the line I'm talking about. This is the line that, that doesn't appear, won't appear. All right, let's try four hour again and wait for it to, where is it? Where is it? I'm slowly losing patience here. I cannot deal with this nonsense. Here it is. Okay. This, this trend here. Oh, we didn't bounce at it. We fell just below it. It looks like, but we did bounce at this 4080 level. Was this 9.30? No. So this is it here. But this is a four hour. So let's zoom in again. And at 15. So we bounced. See, yeah. We bounced here yesterday. We bounced here pre-market. But then we fell below it. I guess this is a fake breakdown. But false breakdown of 4.088. And um, yeah. It's a pretty good recovery. But 4118 is quite a ways off. I, I wouldn't wait for it to get 4118. I would have sold earlier, but not. I shouldn't have sold as early as I did, obviously. Um, yeah, this is unfortunate.
likely it's going to slowly grind there later on today. There may be one last ditch push to push it up to that point to 4018. But again, look at this. I have 4115 here. God, man. This is probably actually 4118. Right now we're at 4108. So this has got to be 4110. I, I'm going to assume. I don't know. It's all a guess for me, unfortunately. Be 107. So yeah, man. I wish I can go back in time when I had this at sell at 60 and just quickly erase that sell and just walk away. Because man, to make 50 bucks today would have been wonderful. I probably also, I hate to say it, if I could have made more than 50, it could have made maybe 70, 80. No, 70 would have been the max. If I could have made 50 bucks, I probably would have taken that 50 bucks out of the account to help pay the rent. Unfortunate. So I, I was reading this, the psychological, because I, I arrived a little bit early for my client yesterday and he showed up a little bit late. So I had time to read this book, um, the psychology book I bought for trading. And um, I've, I've heard this said many times, both from MK himself on some of his videos. <clears throat> And it was in the psychology book. But here's something I've noticed. If you make trading your passion, like this is this is you live, eat, and breathe trading, chances are you won't succeed at it. I find that fascinating. Almost anything else, you make it a passion, it becomes your 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 embodiment of everything. You eat, live, and breathe playing the piano for for, for example. You watch videos on playing the piano, you like movies about playing the piano, you listen to piano music. Chances are you're going to become at least halfway decent at playing the piano. But I find it fascinating that with trading, if you focus on it too much, if you if you put too much effort into it, based on the, psych the psychological book and based on MK, uh, Maurice Kenny, whatever, you're not going to succeed at it. Like you basically have to treat it like it's a side hobby. And I find that notion interesting but i believe it's all that only works that only works if you have a large enough account that you're not emotionally stressed wait two things you need to a have a large enough account and b your life in general has to be stress-free enough in other words you're not struggling financially you're not living check by check um that this becomes sort of like a game a hobby for you and I don't know how many people can can be like that. And and here's the thing, if you are like that, if if you're how do I put it? If I was making, you know, seven figures a year driving my dream car McLaren, I I wouldn't be sitting in front of the computer like this every day, even for just a couple hours trading. I wouldn't. I would just be going out, enjoying myself. I would probably go hang out. I'll be in Italy having breakfast or something. So I, I don't know. I find that notion contradictory that you have to be in a state where you're not stressed at all about trading and it's not even something you need to do. That's how you succeed at it. It's fascinating. Oh, wait, hold on. Let's look at VIX really quick. I haven't updated VIX. So again, we have been in this channel for the longest time. We broke out of it yesterday. Now we've fallen back into it, but it looks like, remember this daily that I mentioned that we've been sort of, VIX has been trapped under for over a week. We broke down from it and now we're rejecting. I'm surprised we didn't make it all the way, but something must have happened and we're pushing back up again. So I'm curious if we'll get a rejection either at this daily or at this, um, this flag I have here. Also on SPY, I had considered when I had that other option plugged in, the 20, I had considered putting a buy-in at 4106. 
The reason why this is this orange color is because it seems to have been a magnetic level for a while. We bounced here at pre-market as well. So I had considered on this $20 option, the 409, although I probably could have picked the 408, come to think of it, and I could have afforded to get into that. No, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I don't have enough for the 408. All right, let's scratch that. If I had gotten into the 409, and but then again, I would have to make sure I put my buy in exactly where I need to. Looks like I could have gotten in maybe at 15, 16, and then set my sell at 25, 26, but again, it didn't even make it up to there. And it looks like bulls are running out of steam for now, but we could bounce again here, we could bounce here, but again, I'm not gonna trade anymore. I think this is this is just observing territory now. Alright, I tried to read Adam Cini's tweet that I forgot to read before and all that time I wasn't recording. This OBS program crashed. Alright, let's try this again. After your no. Yes. After yesterday's 1% red day, 4088 and 4100 were key supports, and ES certainly agrees. Here for 18 hours now, trying once to fail 4088 and they are trapping. Same drill. 4118, 4123, next target. If we test 4088 again, we'll likely fail. Quick and simple. All right. So 4118 is still the target above, and that's, again, that's way up here. So, um,. I think I see, I forget what this pattern is called. Sort of like an expanding pattern coming down this way. So it may bounce. I'm just going to draw it out of curiosity. We may bounce here. But... I have to say, we, we have, of course, formed a supply. We're 10 minutes into this candle, and we formed a demand on VIX, so that's not good. I'm curious where my original option is. <laughs> it's funny, even with this sell-off, I'm still way above where I initially sold. I damn sure sold way too early. Oh my god, dude. I hate saying ifs, but if I had gotten in at 45 like I should have, and if I waited and sold at 105, or hell, 115, man, and better yet still, if, if I had a large enough account, if I could have gotten 10 options at 45 or 450, sold 8 at 105, and hold on to the last two to see if we do tr go up to um, 4118, 4123. That would have been a beautiful trade. I wonder if this is a resistance. Well, anyways, let's see what happens. Okay. <clears throat> We, I took off that line. We never bounced at that line. We are bouncing though at VWAP, but it looks like a weak bounce so far. But it's like the bulls are succeeding. One could have gotten in at 50. It would already be up $15 or 150, depending on how many you put in. Let's look at VIX because I find this interesting. All right. So again, this channel that we were stuck in for a while broke out of it. This is a much larger channel. I may remove this though, to be honest. Um, we fell back and almost reached daily before rejecting and bouncing. But look where we're rejecting now. Oh, oh, let me back it up a bit. This channel again, let me see where I can zoom in. This channel again, looks like we're rejecting right off that channel. But we're holding within this daily. This is going to be a, a rough spot here, I presume. Um, until we can break away one way or the other away from this area. This is going to be choppy. We still haven't made our way to 114118 yet, but still. We're one to have gotten in down here, which 
I was that one, not quite down here, but close to uh, somewhere up in here. Exiting here would have been phantasmical. But it looks like bulls are having trouble keeping this above view up, so I'm curious what's going to happen here. I'm still wondering if maybe I shouldn't have removed that line. Let's see. All right, I'll just keep it for now. I'm curious if it has any future effect. What likely is going to happen is that bulls are going to recover this. We'll finally push up to 4118 later on this afternoon. I believe, and something else Adam and CD mentioned that I should start considering too. He doesn't like trading between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. He believes those that between those hours, there's just too much chop and not enough volume. So he prefers to make his trades before 10, uh, 11 a.m. and after 2 p.m. But since he does futures, he can that leaves him a large wath of time to trade still. <clears throat> I also find that curious is the volume more or less after say six o'clock on futures compared to between eleven AM and two PM. I would think it would be less, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the futures are being traded more by people in other countries, I guess. Yeah, so chances are bulls are going to bounce at VWAP here. We're also at VWAP close to it on ES and push further. But still, they got to get past this supply that was created. You know what? I should draw that supply too. It's a very clean supply. Because it's possible that the supply might get retested. And then we fall again. If we break past this line here, I'm going to go ahead and remove it. All right, another quick update. As I suspected, the bounce at VWAP failed and we fell 4100-4088. Um, again, I don't know if I have this level correctly. Yeah, we're at 4094 right now. So... I don't know. If, let me just adjust this. 4093. So, once again, my levels are off. All right. So there's no way this is 4088 then. Oh no, it looks like it is. All right. So, we could. This could be an inverse head and shoulder. We could pull back up, but on VIX, it looks like this four hour support is now serving as resistance on VIX, which is good. If we can reject here, then it should rally. But as I mentioned a moment ago, this area here, this resistance, this possible channel, um, this daily, this, again, I don't know if I'm gonna get rid of this or not, I may, I may get rid of it, but this channel that we were in for a while, remember this one here, all of it confluences right here. So this is going to be a, an interesting area. So yeah, I'm curious what's going to happen from here. But this would have been a decent short. And as I said, I've been noticing anytime VIX creates a clean supply or demand, price on SPY makes a decent move where you don't even have to wait for a retest. And again, here, no retest was done, but still a pretty good push down. I wonder if one can create an algorithm where 
anytime VIX creates a supply or demand, um, one can do a uh, a short or a long in accordance to that. Like here, uh, supply was formed here and we rallied. So, anyways, I'm sure somebody knows how to figure that out. I certainly don't. All right, I'm realizing now it was a mistake for me to have not taken this short. In fact, this line could have been considered a resistance. And had I taken this short, the target would logically have been 405. So if I chose a 405 put around the time that this was occurring, this is a one o'clock candle. Let's move around to one o'clock. Here we go one o'clock so I could have gotten in as low as 17 20 dollars even up to here there's multiple opportunities I could have gotten in short 20 dollars and look at this drop and you can see it blasted past the demand that was formed earlier and 4088 was the last this chance for bulls and now we've made a new low of the day which may well accelerate the selling this may go ahead and drop down to 4072, and this is probably going to go up to maybe $80, $90. So here we go. Yet again, another example um, of me not making a trade when I probably should have. Oh, well, it's kind of hard to fight Disney, I suppose. They have... Boomer has it, they have quite a bit of money. All right, so, yeah, man, this is unfortunate. And you know the funny thing too, as I saw this drop, it never occurred to me that this might bounce. Sorry. Because from my point of view, if the bulls wanted to get this to come back up, the best spot to have done it would have been here at 4888, which would, which would have created a inverse head and shoulders and may, might have helped push this up again, but because they lost 4088 with with force apparently, and blasted right through the previous demand, yeah, this is this is what's needed to get this thing to drop. I have to start thinking of how to switch from being a bull to a bear quickly. I mean, it's not it's not like it's binary. I mean, it's not like it's one or the other, but I have to think more versatile, basically. And I even said it when this was bouncing. I said it looks kind of weak. It might not bounce at VWAP. And if it drops down again to 4088, chances are it won't last. It might drop. But if it does turn around, we can get an inverse head and shoulders. And let's look at VIX. And again, like I said, a strong demand formed here. And we've just been rocketing up. And I said this area might be a problem. We chopped a little bit, but just pushed right past it. Bounced again off of this channel that we were stuck in earlier and pushed back up. Chances are we're going to hit either this and rest, this level here, or possibly the four hour. I think by the time we hit this or this, we'll be confluent to the next level down, which should be 4072. Let's look at ES for more accurate. Yeah, 4072 should be the next spot down. After that is 4055. I even had a notion right now to see what happens. Well, well, to see what happens at 4072. Let's see. I'm curious if we have a bounce at 4072. We come back up to a previous level, maybe the previous resist um, demand, reject there, reject there, and then we can have another opportunity to take a put. So I'm going to put an alert. If we get above, although I think this might be the level that we reject from again, because this is where we bounced. But even if we come back up to reject off here, I wouldn't be able to get in. I couldn't afford it. In fact, now that I think about it, I might not be able to afford it even if we come back up here. I'll have to choose a, a further out strike. This is 405. I might have to choose 404. 
but puts are risky ODTE towards the end of the day they really have to move yeah I should have taken this short earlier man almost 40 minutes ago I could have capitalized on this little move yeah, that's my mistake it's my mistake I need to I need to be more versatile and quick to the trigger and quicker on my feet when it comes to trading. All right, I was just doing my language lessons and I got I set the alert for $24 to see if I can get in again if this turns back around and look. And I saw it coming, I saw it, I saw it going back up to previous demand, but the reason why I didn't want to take it short was here. Look, on, on VIX, look where we reached. Remember the bull flag I found this morning? <sighs> Look where we're rejecting. And that is bullish to me because of that rejection. I found that interesting. For this reason, this is why I didn't take it short. But it looks like it would have given me a little bit of profit if I had. Um, wow, for some reason, I was just about to hit by market. I don't know what my brain was thinking. It's like some set of my brain took over but I wouldn't be able to buy anyways because I don't have enough money but um, as you can see we started off rejecting from previous demand previous major demand but uh, looks like we're just chopping here let's see what this is anyways So yeah, if I had set my buy-in at like 21, I don't know if it's got as low as 20, 21, and set my sell at 31, could have squeezed an extra 10 bucks out of this. But it did not occur to me to take this short again because of what was happening with the VIX here, this rejection. I'm not sure why this is turning around now, and I'm wondering if I should put a level here, but I don't think I'm going to. Hmm. <sighs> anyways oh wow look not only did this turn around if I had I set the buy-in if I had just jumped in this thing has gone up and has broken through this flag now which should tell me that um, spine ES is about to drop hard in the next hour possibly so had I gotten in I would already be up over $20. And that would have put me back to where I was beginning of this week. Oh, I screwed up there. Sorry. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate. I, sh I should have seen this opportunity coming, but... Like I said, I saw the rejection here and it spooked me from going short. Um, but you know what? That's that's asinine. This rejection was why my alert kicked in to begin with. Why it created a demand here and turned around, I don't know, but I should have realized that it was forming a demand. That should have been the reason I should have taken it short. Maybe the only time can tell if I'll learn this better. All right, closing bell just struck. Let me zoom in here. Hold on. Oh my god, dude. Sorry. It's think or swim. For some reason, when I try and zoom in closer, <laughs> wow, I don't know. Anyways, after this major supply formed, this was a pretty hard sell for the rest of the day. Um, I had a chance to continue to jump in here. And I didn't. Um, and we got down to 403 for now. <sighs> Looking at VIX, we chopped in this flag. Um, fell under for that little rally, but I guess that wasn't really expected. It just turned around and fell back up, broke out of this again, and then fell back down. This four hour being the resistance for now.
<clears throat> I might remove this. I don't see this being of any effect, but maybe not not just yet. Oh man, I keep doing that over and over again. It's because these two are so close. Anyways, uh, I think that's it. That's, that'll be it for the video. Um, I'm gonna try and finish this up tonight. <laughs>